want us all to stand and read Hebrews chapter 1. Today, all over the world, churches will be preaching on Easter message. Likewise, I have one from the Lord. I spent time lying on my bed and then getting inspired and putting in what does say the Lord. Hebrews chapter 1 and reading verse 1. God, who at sundry times said in diverse manners, spake in time, passed unto the fathers by the prophets, had in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he had appointed, heir of all his things, by whom also he made the worlds, who been the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. And then the pages before Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, and we will read in verse 8. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. This morning, I want to share with you on this text, an empty tomb can fill your life with resurrection power. An empty tomb can fill your life with resurrection power. The Lord bless you. You may be seated. Easter Sunday is a time where it is so important for you and I to remember because the Bible, God tells us, in fact, Paul said in, second, in First Corinthians, remember that Jesus Christ died for your sin, but also the hope that he has given you he is risen. And you know that the Bible says the ladies run to the tomb on Sunday morning expecting to find a body still there. And in fact, they were grieved that the body was not there. But the angels say, what are, who are you looking? Is he is risen. And so we need to remember, it is so important to remember what makes me continue today in my calling? That the things that I have to go through. You see, you and I, we live a life, sometimes we feel lonely. Sometimes we are distressed. Sometimes we are not happy. Sometimes we are in pain. Sometimes we are in financial difficulties. I remember when I was in Germany, my brothers all has left to different parts of West Germany, to Switzerland, to Sweden. I was left alone in the city of Stuttgart, and I have to work in a Chinese restaurant. Never in my life I was so alone. And when you are so alone, suddenly you go into a little bit of self-pity. You go into a state of depression. You feel frustrated. You don't know what to do. But I thank God that I was able in those lonely times to spend time with Jesus. The sweet moment that I talked to Jesus. Like King David, I was able to encourage myself and say, though I'm alone, Jesus, you are with me. And today I want you to know that he died so that you can have Jesus, his resurrection power can be yours today. 
if you choose to receive it and say, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Jesus is with me. I'm not alone. You need to remember that. And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and this is where Paul said to the believers, in verse 23, he said, For I have received of the Lord that which I also deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. It is so important, every one of you, precious to the Lord, that when you take of communion, you remember it is as the time Jesus was with the disciple. He has to leave them. And the disciple, all this while, they enjoy the wonderful experience with Jesus, the miracles, the outstanding fellowship. But suddenly, the time is going to come. They will be alone. Like John thrown to the island of Patmos. Jesus was preparing them. Peter is going to get beheaded. Paul is going to be on a rough journey to Rome and also get beheaded. So they are going to face all this tough time, but Jesus had communion with them. Jesus broke the bread and said, when you take communion, it's to remember I'm there with you. I'm giving you the power. Communion, it is something, and then all these years I have been giving communion out to everyone. Suddenly God say, you as a shepherd giving out the communion, do you know what really is deeper than that? Recognizing the body you have said, and that we are one, and we should not be sinning and all that. But more than that, you need to understand, communion is Jesus' assurance when you take the fellowship He's with you. His power can be yours. And you have to take it. And this is where Paul say, when you take communion, it is to remember. And so many a time in the ministry of my life, when I'm back in Malaysia, I remember. I remember the time I was alone in Stuttgart, in West Germany. I remember when the Lord touched me and healed me because I was sick. I was alone. I don't have my friends around. I was running a high temperature. I don't have medical insurance. But hey, I've got Jesus. And I was first Jesus. And Jesus came down and touched me and healed me of fever. Communion is Jesus is there and saying, I'm with you always. You are part of the body. Take it. Remember, I'm with you. We need to remember. You see, in life, we go through a lot of things. Some, there are things we don't understand. But we should not be frustrated. We should be people at peace because we know that Jesus is with me. And truly, Jesus is with you. But you've got to believe it. You've got to receive it and you've got to take it and say, anyone can say anything about me, but Jesus is with me. Belief is very powerful. Remembering is very powerful. Remembering can push you forward. Remembering is good for your wholesome spirit. So you need to remember when Jesus touched you. 
when Jesus heal you. When Jesus comes into your life and you receive the, his spirit and speak with tongues. So there are things we need to remember. So it is so important that in remembering, your faith will be strengthened. Your faith will be strengthened. Jesus say, do this as often as you can. Do this as often. You know, a lot of time, we get this idea, oh, I must go to church, they have communion, then I take communion. Wrong. Do you know you can take communion yourself with God? It does not have to be initiated by anyone. And I'm not, I'm not encouraging, okay, that you disregard coming together because the Bible does talk about coming here. But folks, if you have the Holy Ghost, if you have been baptized in Jesus' name, I have done it. There was no church. And I was alone. And I know about communion. So you know what I did? I went and took some grape juice. Not alcohol, huh? Otherwise I'll be singing and dancing. Okay? Because there is the temptation there. So I take grape juice and I take some cream cracker. And I bow down and pray and say, Jesus, I want to have communion with you. I want your presence. I want your resurrected power in my life. In Jesus' name. And I took the communion myself and take off the grape juice. You see, Jesus said, do this as often as you can. So there are times you are somewhere, the church is not there, your brother, sister is not there. Do you mean to say you do nothing? No, 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 no. You can. Communion is your acknowledging Jesus, your power in my life. You have reason. So you say, oh, pastor, now you encourage me anyway. I don't have to come. I take communion. No, 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 don't do that. When we come together, we take part of communion. But when you are alone in Timbuktu, somewhere I don't know, God knows, you can initiate communion yourself with the Lord. We are not under law. You see, if Christian, you live, this one can do, this one cannot do, you are going to die. You are condemned. A lot of Christians live their life under the law. And sometimes, we are the judge. Brother, you didn't obey the law. Jesus said in the Bible, you know, the law of Moses, you cannot do this, do that. You still you lie, brother, you lie. We are putting ourselves under condemnation. But folks, we must always remember, Jesus come to give us grace, mercy, and faith. We need to live without condemnation. We need to understand that not my good works, not what I can do, but I just rely by faith and belief Jesus' goodness. Then you will live a victorious life. A lot of Christians try to, you know, back then, even I'm at fault. Cannot do this, cannot do that. I, I want to be better. Like, like a child, trying to prove to the parent that's not love. The love of God is not governed by rules. In fact, the Bible says, even you don't deserve it, Jesus still loves you. But our standard is, you need to deserve that love. You need to do good. You must be a good boy, Cedric. Then I love you. We condition. That's so sad. So today, you need to say and believe Jesus loved me, even if I'm sinning. But our idea is, if I'm sinning, Jesus don't love me anymore. That's your version. As far as the understanding and the revelation that I have after all these many years, even if now I'm having a beer, I mean, I'm a pastor, you know, pastor cannot drink beer, you know. But for whatever reason, suddenly the devil can say, get a beer. So, because I was angry at the congregation, I was, I was angry at the ministry, or I, angry at God, I take a beer and drink. Do you think Jesus loved me or he don't love me? 
what will be your answer? You think Jesus is like you and I? I don't love you. Lah. You're supposed to be a pastor, my under shepherd, and you drink beer. You naughty, naughty pastor. I won't love you. I'm sorry. That's your version. But Jesus will still love you. And that's why the Bible says his love will draw you. He will draw you. So, as precious people of God, let us not live under the law and always get condemned. Let us live under grace. Irrespective who I am, what I have done, and what I'm going to do, my success or my failure. See, the world judge people by success and failure, whereas God does not do that. That's why we can read in the Bible, the people fail is where God will go and ask, no, uh, this uh, Jonah, why are you running away? Why are you going way further and further away from me? You see, God cares for you. Look at Judas. Even when Jesus was breaking bread, Jesus also gave bread to Judas. Do you know that? Jesus knows that Judas is going to betray him. But Jesus did not single him out and say, everybody can take bread, but except Judas, he's going to betray me afterward. No, no, no. Jesus still gives Judas the bread. And do you know Jesus also washed Judas' feet? Because at the washing of the feet, all the disciples, including Peter, Jesus washed everyone, irrespective. Whether what they will do eventually, that's their choice. That is a choice that you and I have. And it is so important today. We need to understand that he conquered death for you. You are supposed to die, every one of us. But Jesus conquered it. And say, here you can have the resurrected life. We can live a resurrected life. We don't live a dead life. You know what's a dead life? A dead life, you cannot do anything. The psalmist say, a dead lion, so glorious, a lion, you know. But it's dead. He cannot do anything. He cannot talk. He cannot walk around and frighten everybody. It's just a dead lion. Even a little boy will go and he's not afraid of the dead lion. Right? But a live dog, you better be careful. Even it is a paria dog. Or a, you can say those... You know, unowned. You better be careful because the dog will bite you. So you don't want to go near, even if it's a small little dog. One time, a chihuahua, I thought it was a small little dog. Chihuahua, make a lot of noise. And then he came and bite me. So you don't underestimate a little chihuahua is small, but it can bite. So you better be careful. Don't mess around with anyone that is alive, is living. And so, if you have a resurrected life, the devil better not mess around with you. Because when you have a resurrected life, you are the power to be. And you need to believe you are resurrected. God wants you to know. You are resurrected. You are not subjected to the things of this world. So when you are angry, when you are discouraged, when you are sad, just say, in Jesus' name, I am resurrected. And the devil will run away from you. The devil will not mess around with you. It is when you start continuing like Eve that the devil say, oh yeah, yeah, and keep on the conversation and he eventually get you into not believing who you are. Always remember, God created you in his own image. Do you know how powerful that is? God created you in his own image. And that's God's intent. God wants you to be like him. Not like the world, not like the devil. But if you choose to, God cannot stop that. It is your choice. You can live happily or you can live sad. All right? And that is our choice. Remembrance gives us hope. And that's why the Bible 
Jesus always say, remember, remember when I was with you. Remember, you are not alone. Remember, First Corinthians, Apostle Paul mentioned this in First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8. He says here, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Jesus is not talking about the natural. He's talking about there are princes of darkness. They don't know. You see, the devil don't know. What is God's plan for your life? What is the power of God in your life? doesn't know. Because the Bible says, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They messed up. That means they shoot themselves in their legs. You see, a lot of time we give the devil credit. The devil do this, the devil do that. We glorify the devil by in our conversation. We even pray and glorify the devil. Do you know that? We should not. The devil today is under our foot. And we need to remember, Jesus has conquered over death. Death had not put no power over you. You have been resurrected. You have the power to be. So it is so important that you and I, we need to realize God had been resurrected. Jesus, God in the flesh. And God said there's an empty, empty tomb as a witness for you and I. So we need to go and live our life not still in the tomb like a dead fella. A lot of Christians live their life like a dead fella. This one cannot, that one cannot, everything cannot. In fact, Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and life more abundantly, but we are not having the life. We are having struggling life. Because you don't come to the remembrance. Remember what Jesus has done for you. He who is rich in glory became poor. That you might, you might say, hey, Pastor, it's easy to say than done, but I'm still poor. Well, then you're going to do something about your poorness. Yeah. You know, things don't happen by coincidence. We all, every time you say, lucky, la, you're lucky, coincidence. No, 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 don't use that as a believer. You need to pray and believe. Jesus said what? Ask whatsoever you will and pray and believe. And don't rely on your ability and your, your strength. You must say in God, all things are possible. I use that. And I'm enjoying my life. And, and quit being so negative and say, you know, die la, see the brother or sister cannot get the loan. I don't think I can get la. As what you believe and say, it will happen to you. If you think you are, addic you are addicted to drugs, you eventually you will. I mix with those days in my early high school, fellas that all, they just thrown themselves into all this thing that do not help them. And some of them ended up almost so sad and so bad in their case. There was one very bright friend of mine in Jalan Ipo, bright, intelligent guy. But because he mixed with the wrong company. And after I came back from Germany, I met him and he's stinging, he's bad. He was in a crutch. He was thin like a bamboo. And I said, what happened to you? He said, well, I just keep going deeper and deeper. And he has not lived right up to my age. I think somewhere in his 40 or 50, he died. And his name is, if I still recall, Mutusami. I still remember how a person can degrade and destroy himself. And that's why it's so important, folks, 
that we mix with someone that can help us and lift us up. Don't mix with someone that pull you down and that cause you to do nonsense. They don't edify you. They don't inspire you. You stay away from that. It is important because the Bible says iron sharpen iron. Iron cannot sharpen against a wood. A wood is a wood. In fact, the iron can cut the wood. So why do you want to go and mess around with the wood? You want to mess around with iron. At home, I have a knife. I have a chopper knife. I have a slicing knife. But I have a long piece of those iron rod. And every time my neighbor hear me go, shik, 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 shik. because I'm about to cut the chicken or cut the piece of pole. And when I do iron sharpen iron, one time it sliced my finger. Ooh. And I was screaming, Mommy! My wife, la, Mommy. I always call my wife Mommy. <laughs> She's my Mommy. She takes care of me. Mommy! Break plaster! A big grown up fella, a grandpapa like me, screaming because of one slice on my finger. And to put the plaster to stop the bleeding. So iron, sharpen iron. You need to mix with someone whose life is like an iron. You don't want to mix with someone his life like a wood. You know? Every day, you know, it's, it's dead, la, cannot, la, this, la, uh, not happy. La. He's going to pull you down. And that's what happened to my friend. In fact, they all surprised, my school friends surprised. I say, well, number one, Jesus saved me. Number two, I have the church I mixed with that pushed me up. Do you know the church will push you up? The church will not pull you down. If you say the church pull you down, then something is wrong. Because Jesus is the one that built the church. The church don't build itself. So you're trying to say Jesus pull you down? No, 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 Jesus don't pull you down. Okay? The church is where you and I become. We try to pull one another up. Nobody there to be pulled down. Of course, we go, people were pulling us down when we were in the world. But the moment you come into the church, everyone wants to push you up. Yeah, they want to push you up. Pastor wants to push you up. Pastor will not push you down. Understand that. Pastor wants you to be even greater and better than me. Because why? That's what the Bible tells me to do. Esteem your brother greater than yourself. And I want you to be greater than me. So why? I can rejoice with you. Then you, every day you can take me to Mandarin or rental. <laughs> because you're greater than me. You've got more money and you are successful and I want to. You know, continue to be your friend. That's what we want to be. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Lord. Lastly, we need to remember resurrection reminds me that he was raised by the Spirit of God. And the same Spirit now dwells in you. In Romans chapter 8, verse 11, that same Spirit is going to resurrect you in that day. It will transform your body. And that's what we are all looking for. That's the hope. That the day will come, this sinful body. That's why today the cosmetic industry is spending so, so much, you know, into developing all the Botox and the Notox and the whatever tox. That eventually you become toxin all over. So that everybody wants to look beautiful in their body. Botox here, Botox there. Botox everywhere. And they're making money out of you. And you thought you want this body to be perfect then, if possible. The psalmist will come to you and say, look at you and say, vanity upon vanities. <laughs> so don't spend your money on all that. It's not giving you the real answer. The real answer is the Holy Ghost. One day the Holy Ghost is going to transform your body. No need any talks. The Holy Ghost is going to make you glorify. 
glorious, resurrect you. That you can even walk through war and not hurt. The Botox cannot help you walk through war. You will still get stuck against the wall. But the Holy Ghost will make you walk through. And then somebody come and hit you also. Ta-da! It's like it cannot hurt you. So Paul is reminding us that in the day to come, every one of us is going to have a glorious body. We will not live in pain in this body. Right now, as I'm speaking to you and those online, I know you get up early morning. You cannot get up. Some people, you ask them, you know, especially my age, squat down, squat down. Pastor, are you sure? Squat down, lah, squat down. Ay, 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 ay. Ah. Get up, ah, get up, get up. Ah. Of course, you ask the young people here, squat down, they do it. No problem. But you ask people like me, Rabbi Naidu, Brother Super, <laughs> it's a hard task to squat down. Yeah? This body is old. It's the old model. But then the young people, they thought they have a good body. We challenged my grandson, Cedric. His body is electric. <laughs> electric model. You still use petrol and diesel and hybrid outdated like you. So my two grandsons, their body are electric. They can bend, they can do anything, and you, you lose out. <laughs> Seriously. It's, you know, it's funny, sometimes we think, but what my message to you this morning, rely on the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. You need to rely on the Jesus Christ power. Not your power, not anybody's power. Sometimes we think too much of other people's power. But this morning, the power can be yours. And the power to be is, there's an empty stone. Empty tombstone is for you. You can rise again. Whatever your condition, where other people have given up hope on you, God has not given up hope on you. And that's why this Easter Sunday, Jesus said, I have reason. I have reason to give you hope. Where you don't have hope in the world, you don't have hope even in yourself. Jesus said, take me. I will be your hope. You can live a resurrected life today. You must believe and you must always remember, Jesus died for me. I refuse to live a dead life, an unresurrected life. I want to choose to live a resurrected life. And guess what? God said, I give you the power. God's power. You see, when God challenged Abraham to believe in his power, you know, at Abraham's age, he knows the word of God and the promise. And you need to understand, Abraham is before the law. There was no law. Moses only went to Mount Sinai get the law. But Abraham, not yet. A few hundred years before Moses. But God said, I'm, I'm the power. Abraham, I will make a covenant with you. Abraham, my promise is for you. And then Abraham, childless. Continue to be childless. Like there are people that I know. Today they are 50 years old, still no child. 60 years old, give up already. So can you imagine Abraham, 90 years old? Give, 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 give up. 90 years old. Sarah also laughed. Sarah told God, you think I'm going to have pleasure with Abraham, 90 years old? Abraham, I love you. Come, let's go to bed, Abraham. Oh, we're going to have a child, Abraham. God said, oh. you can't even squat down and stand up. You ask some of those 90 years old, squat down. Pastor did it just now. I mean, pastor is like 67 years old. Squat down and then get up. So Abraham, 90 years old, you know. 
to have a child. Are you kidding me? But God saying, I'm the power. I can make your body change. Suddenly, at night, Abraham sleeps. Suddenly, he became young, 30 years old. Sarah suddenly also became 30 years old. Suddenly, they were able to have conceptions and produce Isaac. How about that? You think with God, not all things are possible? All things are possible. Seriously. And the Bible says, Abraham believed God. We need to believe. That's our problem. We use too much of our, this brain. One day, it's going to be tafufa. This brain, you know, the brain is a white, white lump. So when you die, everything, it's tafufa already. <laughs> The, the worm's going to eat it up. For the worm, that's Tau Fufa. So, next time when you eat Tau Fufa, you remember. That's your brain. <laughs> it's going to be Tau Fufa. Praise God. And so, Abraham believed in the power of God. And I want to ask you today, do you believe in the power of Jesus? We need to believe in the power of Jesus. Because Jesus is able Jesus said, do you believe I can? I'm able? So don't doubt Jesus. Say, yes, Jesus, I believe. You can. Amen. Give me that power. We also understand at creation, God demonstrated his power. Let there be light. Let there be water. Let there be green herbs and trees and finally God make you and I in his image so we are talking about power you know how great pow the power of God is and we need to remind ourselves God's power is limitless unlimited and it is for you and I the Bible say because God also demonstrated to the children of Israel His power in delivering them from Pharaoh. So today, what is your problem? Is there a Pharaoh in your life controlling you and trying to make life difficult on you? Then you need to say, cry out. The children of Israel cried out. God... Our life is miserable. Give us the power to be set free. And God sent Moses, the deliverer, God's power. And the children of Israel was delivered from the taskmaster, from the bondage of Egypt. Today, don't be a slave in the world. Pastor, what are you talking? Well, I'm saying, if in your life you have to Ask yourself, I'm not happy. I got this problem. I got that problem. I got a health problem. I have finances problem. I have all these. Then you need to say, Jesus, I believe in you. I have, we have trained. My, my, my Serena have trained Steve Trick. You ask him. And I love it. He always come to me and say, Grandpa, I believe in Jesus, I believe in Jesus, I believe in Jesus, I believe in Jesus. And that is tremendous for a five years old little fella who keep repeating and reminding himself, I believe in Jesus, I believe in Jesus, I believe in Jesus. You don't, uh, after church, don't lie. Everybody can ask him, then you go haywire. <laughs> but he'll tell you, I believe in Jesus. And we need to teach our children there when they're young. So that when they grow old, they won't depart from it. But what about you and I today? We have grown old too long already. We need to be like a little child, like Jesus said. And we need to tell. So I learned something from my grandson. Every morning I say, I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you. I do that. Because by the confession of your mouth is where God delights. And he say, oh, yes, you believe in me. I'm going to do great things for you. You think the YB is all accident, coincident? Maybe our church looks so nice. One day he looked, oh, Gospel Lighthouse, give some donation. No, 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 no. Don't kid yourself. 
it is because you and I, we believe in Jesus. And Jesus can move the hearts of king and those in power and say, give some money to Gospel Lighthouse. They need some money. Same thing with you. If you are in maybe financial, you need to say, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. I did that. When back in the early years of my ministry, I was struggling. I don't have money. I'm trying to start a church, take care of my wife and two little kids. I go to Jesus. Today I'm enjoying the best part of my life. Seriously. Not because I'm so smart, not because I'm a pastor. No, no, no. Because I go after Jesus and tell God, Lord, I believe in you. And we need to do that. So today, whatever your situation is, God wants to demonstrate his power in your life. Not in someone, huh? please. Huh? We have heard too much of people, you know, getting blessed, getting this, getting that. But what about you? Jesus wants to be personal with you. Oh, no, I'm, I'm nobody like, oh, I'm a sinner, oh, I'm this, I'm that. No, 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 hold on a minute. Jesus goes to the harlot. Jesus go to the blind. Jesus go to the lame. In fact, Jesus said, I goes to weak people who have weaknesses. The strong one, the one not sick, don't need me. But the one who really in needs are people who say, Lord, I'm struggling. Lord, I have addiction. Lord, set me free. Lord, my health is not so good. Lord, I don't have money. You see, hope makes it not a shame. When you have hope, don't be ashamed. God wants you to hope in Him. And it is God's delight to give to you. Let's all stand. We can be transformed by His resurrection power. Every day of our life, I want to say to you, you can be transformed. You can be. And that's why God wants you to celebrate. Celebrate His resurrection, Easter. Today, I read in the news, 6.2 million and still growing people die of COVID-19. There are still thousands in the hospital. The virus is still putting fear into many people's lives. But I want you to know this morning, Jesus said, fear not. Fear not. God do not want us to fear. Because fear do not have perfect love. Fear will put you in doubt. So Jesus is saying, yes, 6.2 million souls has died. Thousands are still in our hospital. But today, the whole world, we are not like the world. We must not fear. The church must not fear. The people who don't know Jesus, they fear. And they have the right to fear. But you and I, we don't have the right to fear. Because today is the resurrection Sunday. It is the power of God. And God don't want you to fear. And so, you need to see that God wants to demonstrate His power in your life. Because His reason. His reason. But you and I, we can understand who we are, but not to continue in that state. And I want to play this song, because this is a song that when I was not a Christian, I was a Buddhist, I was fooling around, doing all the things displeasing to God, and I didn't know it. But when I heard this song, I start to cry because it's so powerful. Be in remembrance. 
You know, tombstone always they say in remembrance of John S. Smith, who died such a day. in remembrance. John S. Smith family wants everyone to remember. Here lies John S. Smith. This morning is different. I want you to remember. Amen. This is the song. Hold on, say. That's wonderful about iPad. You don't need music team. Jay. <laughs> Amen. This is a song that moved me to tears. This is a song that tells us about God's love, His grace. And it is for you today. And if your life is bound, if you have a frustrated life, if you have a not resurrected life, if you are not living a life, listen to this song. This is what Jesus already done for you and for me. But we've got to choose. Do you want a life, a resurrected life with power? Power to overcome. Power to have. Power to receive. Power to be set free. Do you want it? You got to be like the blind man say, yes. Yes, Jesus, I want it. The lame man say, I want to walk. The woman with the issue of blood say, I want to be cleansed. Completely make whole. Let us right now raise our hand. Those online, Jesus is greater than your life. What he done in Easter Sunday is for you, solely for you. Mm -hmm.